this is not an audio cassette. This does not play videotapes. This is not a Hasbro Lightbright for adults. You could be forgiven for mistaking this for just another piece of 1980s plastic fantastic trash. But you would be wrong. Nothing quite oozes mid-80s yuppie nostalgia like a Minolta Maxim 7000. You could imagine one sitting in the leather passenger seat of a black BMW convertible parked at a beach somewhere in Northern California. Every aspect of its angular design, the buttons, the contours, and especially the typeface scream 1987. But there is so much more to this camera than its aesthetics. As a statement of modernism, no dials exist anywhere on this chunky proper SLR. Well, Nikon, Canon, and Pentax retained some design traditions in their new models. Minolta was not similarly inclined. SLRs had remained largely unchanged in design and function until this happened. But the defining characteristic of Minolta's Maxim 7000 was that of the first modern autofocus camera that used an in-body motor with a screw drive focus system. It set the standard for autofocus, a standard followed by Nikon, Canon, and everyone else for decades. This was a camera that made an impact. It mattered not only to Minolta, but to photography and to photographers. The Maxim 7000 was Minolta's enthusiast level camera, playing second fiddle only to the vaunted Maxim 9000 professional model. But yet it was a full featured camera with program, shutter, and aperture priority auto exposure, six segment, metering and TTL balanced flash alongside full manual control, albeit through the pressing of buttons rather than the twiddling of dials. It has a depth of field preview and a clear and comfortable viewfinder in which LCD exposure data is displayed. And while those of us using modern digital cameras may find it simple to use today, its electronic controls were futuristically digital in nature when it was introduced. Speaking of features, autofocus speed is adequate by modern standards, with a contrast detection system that works well in all but a dimly lit room. For the first of its kind, it is actually acceptable and was certainly competitive throughout its production run. But the 7000 was not without its own challenges. Perhaps the most amusing obstacle it faced was not the camera itself, but Minolta's own Maxim branding. While the Dynax brand was used overseas, Maxim with interlinked double X's was printed directly on the body in North America. Without expectation, Exxon Mobile was quick to launch a copyright suit, claiming potential confusion with their own interlinked double X logo. Only those of us who received the first production run from 1985 will enjoy the interlinked double X's. The rest of us have to settle for blander branding. No one knows how many they made or where they were sold. They aren't rare cameras, but like so many others set aside in the name of progress, be that by way of newer film cameras, if not the advent of digital, certainly the majority of them are lost in time forever. What's often forgotten though, is how this camera was central to Minolta's final photographic heyday. Before they cried uncle to Nikon and Canon, who had dominated them amongst professional photogs, 
Minolta sold their photography assets, including the Maxim's A-mount lens system to Sony, who used it as the basis for their Alpha DSLR system. Even today, you can still use most Sony Alpha slash A-mount lenses on these classic Minolta SLRs. And rumor has it, the opposite is true as well. It's possible that the Minolta Maxim 7000 might remain underappreciated, only to be discovered by collectors or a celebrity for reasons we don't yet understand. Maybe, just maybe, it's a future relic of an important moment in the evolution of camera design. Either way, if you hold one now, just as your dad might have at the local camera shop back home when he was your age today, it will feel strange, but a good, heartwarming, childhood familiarity strange, projecting the optimism and excess of the 80s forward nearly 40 years into the future, evoking a nostalgia for something decidedly modern, excitement and enthusiasm for a future that's already happened.